need a boo boo. <laughs> It's not okay. Rubbish. I'm just going to go through it. We're going to have to eat them all. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's a mess. She said, open the packets before we start, she said. It'll make it easier, she said. <laughs> it's right. easier to get your hand in there now. You can eat all the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> can you it's still eat like them? like Wolverine <laughs> opens them. <laughs> yeah, but... Not for that one. <laughs> Shall I <laughs> pay for them? <laughs> oh, shut that. I mean, I'm pretty well still. I'm not going to be able to speak now. I know, that was a really good idea. Yeah. Right, we'll get some tea. Mm-hmm. We'll get some snacks. <laughs> we'll get to speak. <laughs> I'm not speak. Is that Dua Lipa just joining us in the background there? It, no, it just looks like Dua Lipa. My mother looks like Dua Lipa. We'll call her. Her name's Naomi. <laughs> Newer, deeper. <laughs> newer, deeper. Almost newer, deeper. Newer, deeper. <laughs> okay. She looks similar. Libby. Why are we here? We're here to talk about being a girl in the church. Mm. We only have a little bit of time to do it, but I think first things first, we need to explain why we've just appeared, who we are, and what on earth we're doing here in this office. <laughs> That is definitely not just my room that I tidied all the rubbish in the background. Yeah, so it made it look really pretty. Professional. Yeah. yeah, it's actually all just over here now. Yeah, hiding. Um, oh. so oh, this is really hard to coordinate drinking and talking at yeah. the same time. So I'm just going to drink you talk. Quite a bad idea. So, um, to introduce ourselves, I thought was far too easy. Yeah. For this. I don't want to make this easy. For this us time us. of evening. So I thought uh, to introduce ourselves, we would actually introduce each other because um, I'm Meg, by the way. This is Libby. We're sisters. Believe it or Hi. not. I know. Look how similar we look. Yeah, if you're like, not at all, that's because that's the joke. We we literally don't look at all alike, do we? No. But we actually are related. So I've known, I've known Libby since birth. She's the younger one, if you couldn't tell. So... I reckon I can rustle up a few facts about you to okay. introduce you. I'm going to get a um, But you don't know what I'm going to say, do you? No. And I have a whole 22 and a half years of your <laughs> life that I can draw these facts from. So uh, we'll start easy. Going to introduce Libby. This is Libby. Mm-hmm. Libby is uh, 22. Mm-hmm. She was born on the 5th of May, 1998. I'd like to say oh, I remember wait, All my it. personal details. I think I remember it. Don't you remember the programme you were watching? You were watching a documentary about Elvis when Libby came home from the hospital. Obviously, she doesn't remember it, but she was there. Um, A few facts about Libby. Once, we catapulted Libby off a seesaw when she was older. I think I was three or four. About three. Um, I remember that. Do you? I do. She So, basically, she ruined a great game because we were putting her on this little, like, red plastic seesaw that we used to have in the conservatory me and our two brothers and we were like catapulting each other onto a beanbag which was great but we were a little bit older and obviously kept hitting the beanbag so then we put Libby on the seesaw catapulted her I missed she missed the beanbag, missed the beanbag. and she landed on the floor of the conservatory which was funny for us you know when someone does something <laughs> and you like ah, oh wait this is bad like <laughs> something bad has happened hurt. maybe she's actually hurt and you ended up going to casualty didn't you yeah but Mum and Dad didn't actually find out what happened until 13 years later. Yes. We told them that she fell off the beanbag. She went with it. Yeah. 13 years later, we were like, oh, do you remember when we catapulted Libby off the seesaw? And Mum was we like... We forgot they didn't know. You did what? <laughs> <laughs> then it all came out. But uh, 13 years later, they can't really tell you. So. No. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. So there's a fact. We broke Libby mm-hmm. by catapulting her off the seesaw. Um, what else is a fact? If Libby could eat only three things for the rest of her life i think they would be bacon cucumber mm-hmm. uh, i want to say pigs in blankets but then i feel like i've already covered it with bacon yeah maybe you should put bacon and sausage in like the same category okay and <coughs> That is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> a, cup of, a cup of tea. A 
cup of tea. Tea. Yeah. We'll count that as a food product. Yes. Um, what else is interesting? Libby used to think that Craig David and Rod Stewart were the same person. If you don't know who they are, and Google them. They are I used absolutely to. not the I same. I only found out like two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you used to think like, was it Belfast was in Wales? No, no, I got Bristol and Belfast confused, but they both begin with a B. And we're nowhere so near each other. Yeah. I think I should be loud for that one. Geography is not your thing, is it? Oh, I did an A level in geography, thank you very much. Uh, Libby has a degree in something funky. She did yeah. countryside management and conservation. So, countryside management and conservation, which is essentially what? Like farming, gardening, and a bit of geography and tourism thrown in. Mm hmm. So. If you need some gardening doing. Yeah. Well. She's your girl. Yeah. Um, TV shows that Libby enjoys include... This whole thing's going to be about me. Old lady programmes. Libby loves, like, Miss yeah. Marple. Midsummer Murders. Yes. Heartbeat. Love a good heartbeat. I've actually seen all of the heartbeats. Bones. Now. Bones is amazing. Love bones. Mm. Bit of NCIS. You watch that with Nan. Just crime programs seems to be the theme. Crime here. and old lady programs. Yeah. That's Libby. Oh, I know what the other food group was. Soup. Soup. If I you can, can make soup it into soup, soup, she'll eat it. Yeah. Yeah. All day, every but day. But not, not broccoli and Stilton. No, don't put Stilton in. I like Stilton. Just makes a good soup. So I think that basically sums you up. Yeah. Shall I maybe introduce you now? Yeah, but keep it, keep it nice. That was, nice. that, was nice. that was pretty nice. nice. That was pretty mm, nice. That was pretty nice. That was pretty nice. That was nice. Thank you. Uh, so, Meg, I'm going to start with what you do now and then go back. Do you know, I never checked that this sounds okay, so I really hope that they can hear us. <laughs> you might not be able to. Um, so, Meg is currently a student paramedic. Mm. Just just got her... Three days old. Little things. Three days old. Three days old. Mm. Um, did her first night shift. Always fun. Um, so yeah. she can drive an ambulance and everything. It's on her license. It's great. It is on your license. Isn't it? it doesn't say can drive an ambulance. <laughs> it should. It should just say ambulance. Um, which I think. So um, Meg has that was actually really good. No, that was really good for the shot. So Meg has a scar down the middle of her forehead, just there. Um, because when she was five. No. Younger. One and a half. Okay. <laughs> I you was trying there. to age you. you weren't there, I was so. there, but I was in the push chair. Because that's the whole thing, I'm pretty no, sure. No, I was in the push chair. Okay. I was I'm two and a bit years older than you. <laughs> how were you there when oh, I was yeah. one and a half? How old are you? I didn't say that. 24. Good guess. 24. I knew that. Um, When's my birthday? The 6th of February, 1996. She got it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, so when Meg was one and a half... She, um, mum was like folding the push chair up and, um, we have like a little porch on the front of our house. And so mum said to, to Meg, stay there, like stand still. And Meg decided she was going to run off because she thought it was really funny. It was and a great she, game. <laughs> it was not after. She ran into a door frame and <laughs> split her head here. And uh, luckily our oh. mum and our auntie are both nurses <laughs> and they steri stripped her head together, stuck it back together before they took her to the hospital. So it was already like nice and neat And do you know what they said at the hospital? They said uh, it was fine, didn't they? Yeah. Right. So, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's right. It's fine. So she now has a lovely scar down her head. I tried to hold a ruler in it once. <laughs> did it work? No. <laughs> it's not that big. Brilliant. <laughs> I did try. Um, On Ash Wednesday, it's great, though. See if they get it right. Because they always get it straight down yeah. the middle. Yeah. Got a nice little tattoo. I don't know what I did to offend the priest on Ash Wednesday this year, but everybody else had, like, perfect crosses, and mine was like, he just pushed his hand across my face. Have you seen that thing online where it's like... um the crosses of Ash Wednesday. And yeah, it's like yeah, the it's... Smudge, <laughs> yeah. The Franciscan. It does the rounds every year, and when mm-hmm. it does, just makes me quite happy because <laughs> it's relatable. So relatable. there was quite a lot of ash went on, Aww. but it was like this side was a cross, and then this side just looked like he'd rubbed his hand on my head. You're getting very bogged down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of fun facts about you. You love a good documentary, don't you? Like an interesting one about, love, like, mm, culture and I'll, prisons. To be fair, and... I'll watch a documentary about most of <laughs> About anything. Yeah. Yeah, you love a good prison documentary, serial killer podcasts. It's Just, like true crime. Like it's a bit niche. <laughs> like, I like true crime, true crime podcasts. Yeah. I just like to try and work out who did it before they tell me at the end. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's why it's good. There. But I also like funny, funny podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be driving in the car and then just, just laughing out loud to myself. And then you pull up at the lights and someone looks over and they're like, why is that maniac just <laughs> laughing ahead off to herself? But it's actually a podcast. You love a good audio book as well, don't you? I love an audio book, yeah. She's a proper old woman when she drives. Doesn't like listen to like good music. I don't know why that's good music. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Last night we were driving, I was driving the ambulance, and the paramedic had got, so it looks really cool from the outside. I was like, Nina, Nina. I like to go in, and inside he got music on, and it was, You got a friend. <laughs> <laughs> no. You got, and he was singing along to it too, so it's totally just chill on the mm-hmm. inside. I love that. singing Toy Story. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some more um, interesting facts about you. You have. A degree as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll have two soon. Well, you have you have soon. We have lots of certificates, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I think I might have mine. You already yeah. have. have you, go you can keep talking. So Meg has a degree in theology. I had to think about that theology. Um, and oh, a fun fact: Meg went to study in Israel. It was just next to me, so that's fine. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> just proof, to prove, proof. prove my credentials. Yeah. Um, Meg went to study in Israel. How long were you there? Two weeks? Twelve days. Twelve days. Twelve days. That's close. Um, that was last year, like yeah, pre- pre-corona. Do you remember airports? No. <laughs> I don't remember what they were. <laughs> when you were actually allowed to leave the country. Do you remember that? And uh, yeah, so she went out to study in Israel for a little bit. You like your travels, don't you? All over the place. But I don't really like flying. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm a fan of flying, but she'll go anywhere. It's, right. it's a means to an end, isn't it? Like, you don't have to enjoy it, but... Yeah, but if you want to get there... If you're just like, well, Italy, for example, it's a very long walk. It so, very long walk. get on the plane, Yeah. get some you're good people like, to distract what, an you. an hour and a little bit, maybe? Yeah, just have people to distract you. Um, yeah. And you're fine. Yeah. We um we once um I'll be back in a second. flew to another country <laughs> and we ended up was it hang on four countries in one day we did so England Switzerland France and Germany it was um, cheating though it was cheating the airport a little bit. Was yeah so the the airport went into Switzerland and then you drove out into France and then you crossed the border over into Germany so we actually wanted to go to Germany yeah. but it's closer to the Swiss airport oh, I'm so. back fabulous should we maybe like they are my facts. Yeah, facts. I, was that all right? Did I sell you enough? Did you want more? Give you a solid six out of ten. Um, I'll take it. Okay, so we're here to talk about what it's like to be a girl in the church, mm-hmm. and obviously, we both got a little bit of experience so far in like okay, working okay. in ministry and um, from like when I went to uni and some of the jobs I've had after uni. So I thought we could just explain a little bit about what we've done. And then just got a couple of um, things to talk about, like pointers going forwards um, for you guys to have a look at, actually, to go and research some uh, bits and bobs and see what it means to you to be a young girl in the church. And I'm not saying that at the end of this, you're going to be a guru, (laughs) because we are not. But (laughs) we're finding our way through. We're looking at Mm -hmm. examples of other people and just little nuggets of information that you... Oh, I've said nuggets now, we haven't had dinner. <laughs> oh, nuggets. <laughs> We're not having nuggets. Um, yeah, just pick up some little nuggets of information to nuggets. take with you um, as you progress through through this journey, like from confirmation, confirmation being such a big part of your faith journey and onwards, uh, what that looks like. So, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. So, um, a little bit about what I've done. Um, so... We both went to a Catholic secondary school mm. and in our Catholic secondary school, it was very much like you were very much encouraged to get involved, weren't you? Like the RE but We didn't have um, a lay chaplain at our school. No, we didn't. And um, our... It's so sad at the time. It was sad at the time. It has one now. Yeah, they do have one now. But, um, but we didn't when we were there. Um, but we did have a really, really good head teacher. Shout mm-hmm. out to Mrs. Mullins. Carry on. Yeah. I just need to grab something that I forgot to get, but okay. you carry on telling me. I'm going to be the star of this show. <laughs> so, you don't have wheels on your chair. Though, <laughs> yeah, so. I don't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we went to a public secondary school. We were really, really encouraged to get involved in the faith of our school. Um, and we had some really supportive teachers who really wanted you to grow in your faith. And we were lucky in that respect. So, uh, we both got very involved in. 
I mean, we were all, we were and still are all to servers at our local parish. When coronavirus. When coronavirus isn't, isn't a thing, um, because obviously they can't really have us at the moment. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so we started getting involved in like little things in school. So um, when I was in sixth form, oh, we we both went to Lords um, with school, so we got the opportunity to work. Um, in the Akai and Laws, which is like, if you don't know, it's like a little hospital hotel thing. And um, Birmingham, uh, which is the diocese that we live in, um, we take like our own pilgrims with us there. They could be um, sick or elderly or just need a little bit of a helping hand. And we take them to Lords with us. Um, and then we take them round to the masses, to the different, uh, like, the reconciliation service and things, or just take them around town, have a chat. Some of them have some really adorable stories of, like, how they met their husband or wife or whoever, um, whoever they've come with. And, yeah, they there's some really interesting people. So we were both really lucky to go to Lords, and that played a massive part in my faith journey going to Lords. That was, I'm a very practical person, so being able to very practically um, work with other people and learn about their faith journey so far, that was really, really interesting for me. And you meet some really incredible people out there as well, um, of like a similar age as well, because it's a lot of schools go. Um, but yeah, when I was in sixth form, I was given the opportunity to um, run some retreats for our um feeder school our primary school that like came to our secondary school um and that really kind of kick-started me wanting to like minister to young people um and so when i finished at school um i went to work at alton castle um, and i had a really amazing team um and we were a girl heavy team actually um mm. So Meg was my boss while I was there, but she'll, she'll get up to um, But we were a really girl-heavy team and some really incredible girls as well. Yeah. Shout out to um, we, our we, little group called, called the Night Duty Crew. So at Alton, there's a night duty room and uh, the team take it in turns to be on night duty. So if anything happens in the night, like if someone's ill or they do all the washing up in the evening and stuff mm-hmm. and you stay in this bedroom in the castle you're on night duty but the night duty crew like if one of them was on we would all we would go. all go and do it yeah so we wouldn't all stay over but we'd all go over and chat until it was like time to go share to the jobs yeah share the just, jobs chat. just make it a bit more fun than sitting in the castle watch on your own. wild child yeah get some good films going Eight eating cake when it was like <laughs> someone's birthday at midnight oh yeah wait till midnight eat cake yeah. at midnight it was fabulous uh remove people's mattresses when they're on night duty my love a little practical joke got moved around the castle they were always really nice yeah but, yeah uh, and, and they always funny. they always help put it back after most of the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so we had a really really good um group of female friends um and we're really lucky that not all of them were catholic but um, we were really lucky that they were all uh, really active in their faith, weren't they? Mm-hmm. And really encouraged us to be as well. Um, and yeah, like even now, so we like, <laughs> when Corona wasn't a thing, we would all like meet up all together mm-hmm. and have like little weekends away and stuff like that. We were meant to be going to America. To yeah, the girls one of the girls was getting married, so we were going to go out to America. That's not That's happening now. That's stupid by... Um, yeah, let's call it the curse. The curse. <laughs> the curse. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we were really lucky that we coronavirus had this. Coronavirus is the curse. Yes, yeah. yeah. You know. In case you weren't aware. In case you. Um, <laughs> Spoilers. In case you've been living under a rock somewhere and haven't heard. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we were really, really lucky, and I remember um, this one day we went uh, for a walk. So I left the cast. We left the castle at this point, mm-hmm. and some of the girls were doing a second year. And um, I went up just to visit them for like a weekend or something. And um, we went on like this little walk. And then um, we'd like, some of us had just started going off to uni or like getting jobs Mm -hmm. like outside of um, the castle. And one of them was just like, "Um, guys, should we pray? And I was like, sure. So we like stood in the middle of the countryside, like praying for each other, which was really spontaneous, but really nice at the same time. That was Katie. Shout out to Kate Farrell. Mm -hmm. Great um but yeah we just have a really fun really supportive group of female friends don't we yeah which i think is a really big part of being a girl I think in the it church can be hard really to important. find too like yeah definitely um i don't know like 
we're not perfect we definitely still oh, disagree gosh, no. about things but yeah and we do love a bit of gossip which isn't great no but then call each other out <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. will call each other out yeah we definitely will we're like mm, no try harder be better like yeah it's good to have people that you're accountable to oh definitely like, definitely yeah. Mm-hmm. people who are like um yeah that was that was stupid don't do that again but equally the same people who then cheerlead you when... oh all the way like even this like if you've done yeah. the smallest thing but you're so proud of it like every they are like your interview biggest interview you've like, had spotted. after or oh man they don't even have to be that big no it can be like i got a haircut today and everyone's like i love Ooh, it it it's looks amazing, amazing. like well done. <laughs> but it doesn't look amazing <laughs> No one will tell, tell you. you. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> honest friends are such a good thing to have. They really are. And even when they're like, I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> yeah. But, but I think also having being a girl in the in the church. Sorry, can having, I just say one more oh, point on that? Sure. Having honest friends. Mm-hmm. And we're like joking, like sometimes they'll be like, Oh no, that's not a good idea. But you know when they say something to you, like affirm you or, mm-hmm. or it makes it more like, sincere, doesn't so it? So sincere. Yeah. And, that's one of the main qualities I'd look for in a friend. Definitely. Firstly, they have to be truthful. Yeah. Because just there's no reason to lie, is there? Secondly, they have to enjoy tea and chocolate. That's a big one. Um, <laughs> or they have to just be willing to <laughs> make it for make us. Make it for me. Yeah. Um, but sincerity, like. Mhm. But yeah, there's nothing. nothing and and also to be a sincere friend sincere. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you want it from other people, you have to be yourself. It's one of Katie's lines. She'll be like, you know, she's so brummy. Oh, so, so brummy. brummy. She'll be like, you My know, name's Katie Farrell. I know, she's like, <laughs> you know what to say? I'll, I'll just say it like it yeah, is. Yeah, I'll just tell you. She doesn't quite <laughs> speak like, like that. <laughs> I'll but just tell you. <laughs> she'll be like, I'll tell you how it is. And, you know, it's one of the one of her best qualities. It definitely is, yeah. She's one of the nicest people ever. But oh, she's going to be so happy she made it into this. <laughs> she's absolutely... <laughs> not gonna watch it because she'll cringe. Know, she'll, she'll be like, <laughs> yeah. But well, um, they're all like that though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um. But yeah, when when I um, I think it's really important as well to um have support from your friends that aren't in the faith either, Absolutely. and maybe have a different faith or don't actually have any sort of um religion that they follow. Haven't really found that for themselves, like just at work the other day I was chatting to one of the girls and she was saying like she doesn't really have a faith she doesn't follow a religion but she finds it so interesting to talk Mm. to other people and she was like asking me questions and it really helps me to understand my faith as well because I have to be like oh I should probably like double check that or like I should know that and so I'll go off and do a bit of like one of my friends at work came up to me and was like um I have a question I thought it was a bit weird that she came, like, almost asking permission to ask a question, because she wouldn't normally, she just, she'd just go for it. And I was like, yeah, what's the matter? She was like, it's about, um, it's about the church. I was like, go, go ahead. I love these. Yeah. I love these questions. <laughs> um, she was just interested, like, in something that we've been talking about. Um, she just wanted to know, like, the church perspective on it. She's not religious. Um, never, never has been. But we'd been we'd been paired upon a driving course for four weeks, so she had to listen to me basically. So we were locked, we were locked in the van <laughs> yeah, together. Like um, she's great. <laughs> we were just talking, but then it had like gone into her mind, and a few weeks later, she was like, "You know what we were talking about the other day? Can you just explain X, Y, Z?" But she said to me, "You explain it without trying to make it sound like." Like you're forcing like your forcing it. It. yeah. I said, it's, there's nothing about forcing it. I said, because if I am living out what I'm telling people, if I am trying, my, no one's perfect. <laughs> I like to pretend I am, but yeah, I'm yeah. not. Um, <laughs> if I'm living it out, if I'm willing to answer those questions honestly, but sympathetically, that's the best that I can do. And mm-hmm. that, for me, is the best way to draw other people in. Yeah, of course. Being honest, being supportive and being really open like this is what we believe um yeah, some people say this some people say this but this is the core teaching um but being able to say that to someone who's a friend it's really safe mm-hmm. that's that's one of the easier times i've got hiccups on my coffee <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the easier times to do it obviously it gets more challenging when you're trying to speak to somebody who maybe doesn't want to listen or um but also you have to be patient you? You, have you have to, have be patient. to really you like... have to listen to their reasoning yeah because they have a reason that they believe what they believe. Absolutely. You might not agree, 
but you don't have to you don't, no you don't have to you, you have just to. have to but the respect be, yeah be respectful of what they're saying yeah absolutely so sorry I'll no it's okay you're supposed to talk about your life now we're gonna run over our time oh my goodness like he's gonna hate it no we'll we'll fit it in <laughs> yeah so the same as Libby I'll skip out of school I also went to school went to Lords loved it still do go um to Lords not to school <laughs> <laughs> I'm still at school. <laughs> no, now I'm just learning through life, and it's much more brutal than school. Um, love Lords. Been on pill. So that was like the first place I'd say I ever really went on. Mm. Not like pilgrimage, because now on reflection, my mum and dad used to take us on. You know when parents sneak vegetables into a kids' dinner. Mm-hmm. They snuck us on like sneaky pilgrimages without realising we used to go to Bookfest Abbey down south. Yeah, we did. And mum would be like, ooh, they've got this lovely uh, thing called an adoration chapel at the back. Let's go and have a look. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that know, sounds I great. This. She was doing it. She knew Definitely. exactly what she was doing. And like like trips, when we went to um, Holy World with church. That's a place of pilgrimage. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> no idea. And so I think Lords was the first time I had been like, like consciously. pilgrimage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but then obviously later on learn to understand what that meant. I've been to Rome now. Uh, Israel was a trip, but I have got to go to some really amazing pilgrimage sites that I'd love to go again. Uh, but also like to Walsingham. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I love that. So pilgrimage. A great person to speak to. You know Father Michael Dolman? We have a yeah. priest, Father Michael Dolman. But Becky's like cheering. That made it sound like he was our personal he's a priest. hero. He's not a <laughs> But he um, just explains pilgrimage beautifully. And like he's been on quite a few pilgrimages that I've been on. And being able to see like that growth in yeah. becoming involved <laughs> in the church. So it's not just, <laughs> it's absolutely not just female role models that I've taken my faith inspiration from. So yeah. many incredible priests religious brothers we have a community that lives at our church yeah um and they they really want girls to get involved like because they just want young people yeah they want young people so much but yeah like they're so supportive of everybody yeah when i was doing my degree i remember going round to uh to church one day and i said to one of the it was our parish priest at the time would you just read my dissertation he was like of course and it was about um the roles of women in the church yeah. based on like second vatican council i can get really geeky about it but i'm not going to because we're going to run you out of time quite a few priests want to read that actually haven't you yeah and it was just really nice to kind of thrash out the ideas with somebody who uh got it do you know what i mean yeah. and spoke to me like someone who understood what they were talking about even as like a young what how old was i when i was at uni like 21 22 yeah like a young woman in the church who just wants to learn and yeah it's so nice to be taken seriously and like mm-hmm. understood for because it doesn't always happen no no it there's, doesn't uh, yeah there's been a couple of times where i've kind of had to not defend myself but no. kind of i don't even want to say justify myself but it's been a bit but rocky you've and explain, you've had to kind of explain like, yeah. why it is that I, I study what i do and whatever but absolutely that is in the minority. Oh, yeah, People yeah, are 99% of the time amazing with it. I mean, at work now, when I say I did a degree in theology, they're like, <laughs> who's <what>? that? <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's fun to explain. So I obviously worked in Alton, had some amazing friends there who I'll make for life. And like you said about uh, the Night Duke crew, obviously they're amazing. But mm-hmm. my friends like Alice, for example we met on team when i first met her i was like oh she's way too popular for me she would (laughs) i tell her that now and she absolutely howls um just she'd say things like that like let's just pray Mm -hmm. she she's so cool she's got like a proper if you go on her if you go on her instagram (laughs) she will be cringing so hard um go on her instagram and she's like like a model on instagram she's like yeah. yeah Working in Bali. Did she yeah, work in she, Bali? she worked uh, as an international <laughs> tour guide. She, uh, just an amazing, like, young woman of faith, will, like, shamelessly mm-hmm. say what she believes, lives it out. And I know I could ring her at two in the morning, and she's a sleeper, so it'd probably take a few <laughs> rings. <laughs> but she'd answer, and you could, you know, just tell her everything that you're thinking, and she'd be like, okay, shall we, like, we could pray together, we can, like... And she's another person who uh, 
we hold each other really accountable yeah. for stuff. But you absolutely need it's people really like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like I haven't really done justice to <laughs> what I've done in the last few years. I worked for the youth service for a little long. while. Again, such an incredible opportunity to meet uh, young people, meet other uh, leaders, and also work with amazing role models for me both role models of faith and just role models in life mm-hmm. i'm only 24 like i don't yeah. know. i definitely don't know everything i always joke with becky i'm like uh oh i can't adult today i can't adult today I can't adult most days let's be honest i think i know how to but adult. um you don't have to be able to adult every day because oh, no. <laughs> there's other people to help you through and also don't adult every day because it's it's intense also just like do it when you have to we are, called, we are called to to be childlike in our faith so mm-hmm. i'm gonna fight that one all sometimes the way. i take it quite literally <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's having that openness you know like a kid doesn't necessarily like a little kid i'm thinking like little kids like um <laughs> so we went to this uh little kid the other day he was like nine months old absolutely adorable we turned up with all these tools at work like to check and listen to his heart and he was if you've loving forgotten, it meg is a student paramedic yeah so he was looking at like <laughs> the stethoscope the sticky dots but like that just enthrallment of mm-hmm. like what's going on this is amazing not being scared and even in a nine month old you could see that but we get a bit more reserved as we get older and actually having people around us who are these positive role models help to draw us back out of that shell but also having people to look to who've gone before us or um have done things in life that we look back to reflect on we were talking just before we started this weren't we about um role models particularly female role models so i was actually telling libby a bit about uh blessed chiara luce because she quite openly said like i don't know that much much. she knew who she was but yeah i know know i'm like very basic stuff. so i don't want to tell you everything because you definitely need to go and read her story but she was a young mm-hmm. italian teenager um she died quite young she was about 17 when she died she died of cancer yeah but when you read her story what's remarkable for me is how normal she was that's the remarkable bit she wasn't born with the uh like you are gonna be a saint she was born with the capacity to be like we all mm-hmm. are but she acted on it. She went and lived it out. We're all born with that capacity too. But it's not like someone, you know, like Darth Vader, Luke, I am your father. Like, <laughs> Chiara, you will be a saint. She knew she could be and she acted that way. So, like, she used to give toys to uh, children who had less than her. Something that we can do. We can absolutely strive to do things like that. Um, She'd give, she gave, like, when she was dying, she gave all her money to a friend who was going on mission work because she realized that that was a good use of her resources she'd give her time but when she was dying she said she had like nothing else left to give but like love and that all of her suffering was made her feel close to to jesus that for me is incredible and i like to hope that like that wouldn't happen to you obviously you don't want to ever be in that situation but she was faced with that situation and that's how she dealt with it yeah you know totally turned it around and in having the capacity to be saints, we have the capacity to do that. She just really lived it out. She didn't live that long ago. No. Her parents are still with us, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, recently, uh, there's loads of saints. Like yeah, <laughs> It always makes you think of saints like in these robes. There's people being made saints now who wore jeans, who knew what yeah. the internet was, had a phone. Like, they're not just... In just books. when you like hear the, like the name they're of the real people like, oh. who lived the same time that yeah like mobile oh, phones sort of th- were a thing and they actually fit in one hand not like two <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> proper uh, phone so yeah she only died at Chiara Luce blessed Chiara Luce she's not quite a saint yet but she's well on her way mm-hmm. she only died in 1990 and I know that sounds like a very long time ago but I was only born in 1996 so it's not <laughs> it's not a very long time ago <laughs> it's absolutely not a long time ago at all um really really in living memory and having people like that that we can look to their example things that we can do those really practical things that she did and having that mindset that everything that we do is for this reason to be closer to God, to try and do what we've been commanded to do. Having people who've done it already, that's great. Yeah. To be able to look to them and then having those people who are with us now to help and encourage us, that's that's when we know we're super lucky. 
Oh, really? Yeah, definitely. You're lucky to have that. Sorry, I've spoken for ages. No, it's fine. I've spoken for ages before. Um, so I, I listened to Meg before. Um, so one of the saints that, like, I think she's trying to tell me something, Meg, I really do, because all of last summer, um, like, I'd not really heard that much about St. Therese of Lisieux. Like, I knew her name, but that was kind of it. And then last summer, like, she kept coming up in, like, um, I think when we were, what were we doing? We'd done, like, a retreat thing, and she came up. We went to Walsingham, and her name came up again. I'm pretty sure at summer camp her name came up at some point. Mm. And I was like, okay, <laughs> is someone trying to tell me something? And then a couple of days ago, I was like, right, I've got the Laudate app on my phone. If you don't know what that is, it gives you, like, the daily readings and things like that. And I was like, do you know what? I've got a bit of time. I'm going to have a look at what today's, like, reflection is. Mm. And I clicked on it, and it was all about St. Therese of Lisieux. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I think she's trying to tell me something. <laughs> Um, but she has a quote. So she was a young woman in the church. Have you um, been told that thing? There's no such thing as a coincidence. It's a God incident. Oh, I've not heard that. Or I that. like it. Yeah. Uh, this is clearly a like God incident. Father Michael thing. It's like there's no such thing as a coincidence. It's a God incident. It's. I love that. There because it was put there. Yeah. For you. I think she's definitely trying to tell me something. <laughs> but um, it did make me look into her life a bit more. Mm-hmm. I did actually start like looking into it. And she was a young woman in the church, mm-hmm. uh, very set on wanting to become a Carmelite um, sister. And did. She did become. And she died quite young. But um, she has a quote. She's known as the little flower. I think she was about my age. Yeah, yeah, she crazy. was really young. Um, but she has a quote. And um, I'm going to see if I can find it really quickly. Um, But it's about being um, different Mm -hmm. from other people and how if we were all the same, it would be really, really boring. So I'm going to see if I can find it really, really quickly. Or do you want me to talk? (laughs) Pow. Okay, I found it. So um, it is the splendour of the rose and the whiteness of the lily. Do not rob the little violet, violet of its scent, nor the daisy of its simple charm. If every tiny flower wanted to be a rose, spring would lose its loveliness yeah and i really like that because it really shows like everyone has to be everyone individual. has their different qualities everybody has their different gifts charisms vocation we all have the same something, be would, really be something yeah. would be up something would be up so i struggled with that because it's not really it's very curly font. writing yeah <laughs> so i'm like uh would lose its charm and um, but i really liked that so i definitely think that like uh blessed chiara luce uh st therese like they are not that is not an exhaustive list by no, no, any stretch. There's so many. But having a look at people like having a little Google of uh, female saints or, mm-hmm. or male saints or uh You can literally put in like super cool female saints and it will do come you know up what with I so find many. In most people. I love in like birthday cards and stuff putting a quote on the other side from like a saint or a writer or something. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be like, Oh, who's that who said that? Little Google, straight on Wikipedia. Oh, I didn't know about them. Little Google, you know, I love a documentary. I also yeah. love a little fact check, like, oh, I wonder who that is. And you find these incredible people, read their stories, find out more about them. And then, like you say, they come up later on in life. You're like, yeah. what? <laughs> Why do they keep coming up? So I think we both really encourage you. Read a bit more about those uh, two ladies that we've spoken about. But also have a look what's out there. Have a look what other uh, people are saying. Get on things like uh, Blessed Is She. I don't know if you've even been on Blessed oh, Is She. Oh, I haven't been on Blessed I'll Is She. I'll show you later. Yeah. Have a look on there. Um, just these really positive female influences about being a woman in the church. And I think that... Um, I think it was John Paul II said about the feminine genius. Like that we bring Ooh, something. Nice. That women bring something that... Uh, is unique to us a quality that's really unique to us and that cannot be underestimated mm-hmm. in anything he's not just saying it in the church he's saying that we have this quality that is just for us women yeah uh, a little gift i mean of ours. god literally created women like he created man as well obviously but he created women with well, an intention and that our intention he isn't any different look at mary like, right exactly i mean the, the perfect the woman the perfect the woman sake. um yeah i think finding out more finding good positive role models finding people who want to support you through your journey who want to ask questions who want to hold you accountable who want to have a laugh with you mm-hmm. that really is the key to it but like we said we're not experts we're absolutely running out of time so do you have so anything much. else you want to say i was share? just going to say also not being afraid that if somebody isn't uh, being supportive of your faith journey and mm-hmm. is really bringing you down don't be afraid to 
you know spend less time with that person Notice or it. say to that person like actually you're not um, helping me to grow yeah. right now and so I think maybe we should take a little bit of time or we'll try and work it out yeah and yeah try and work take it some out time. or take yeah. a bit of time away from it but really you really need that support absolutely that really positive um environment to, to thrive in so we are going to be around in the comments we section uh, so if you have any questions if you want like us to try and point you some pointers uh, we'll be in the comments below to answer any of your questions but yes. thank you for listening we could literally talk all night we could we've already we run will over be told our off time. because you've already so, run over our time sorry, so, Neil, thank, thank you for listening <laughs> we also have to go and wash up our mugs now and, and eat dinner yeah we've just left all the round trees that we um we don't really these chocolate buns are actually really nice like, so <laughs> yeah so thanks for listening and uh get in the comments yeah yeah do it bye bye